Hey, I'm Nathaniel Fawson. I'm a professional archaeologist, and this channel is devoted to the archaeology of North America, in particular the region that we call the Eastern Woodlands. So recently, a paper came out in the American Journal of Science that claims to have found that one of the mounds on Louisiana State University's campus has been radiocarbon dated to 11,000 years ago. And it seems to be suggesting that 11,000 years ago is the initiation of the construction of the monument. Now, if that's true, it would be especially interesting because the oldest monuments that we know of in North America up till now have been in the same area in Louisiana, but about 5,000 years later. Um, I think Watson break dates around 6,000 years calibrated before present. Um, so there are two mounds, Mount A and Mount B. And Mount B appears to be the older one, according to uh, what they're talking about. Um, and before they were all thought to have been middle archaic, so roughly contemporaneous with sites like Watson Break and the Lower Jackson Mound, which I've talked about in other videos before. Um, so looking at their abstract over here, um, it looks like they're saying that the foundational layers of both mounds are made out of thin ash lenses, which are just very thin bands of ashes that uh, we see in the archaeological record all the time. And these, uh, these ash lenses contain phytoliths, which are silicate structures that are found in, in plants. I'm definitely going to have to do a paleoethnobotany um, video at some point to talk about some of these things. And looking at, um, actually, it doesn't say how they are determining this, but they think that they are, um, these phytoliths are coming from C4 photosynthetic pathway, hydrophilic grasses, so things like river cane and, and stuff like that. And they're also saying that in these ash lenses, there are remains of large mammal bones that have been burned at very high temperatures. Um, and so yeah, Mound B is the one that contains dates from about 11,000 before present, and Mount A started a little over 9,000 years ago, which is also much, much older than any of the other earliest monumental sites that we've got in, in North America. Now, I have not read the report yet, but if it is, in fact, claiming that there was a monumental construction in Louisiana 11,000 years ago and not just some burning episode at the bottom of a monument 11,000 years ago, that would be significant for a few reasons. First, it's in the same region as those other early monuments that I talked about before, but separated by 5,000 years. So no clear connection of... Um, a cultural tradition because it starts and then it stops and then it picks up again thousands of years later. The second thing that's interesting about it to me is that it would be part of the, the Dalton tradition, which is the same tradition and roughly contemporaneous with the Sloan site up in Arkansas, which is only one state away. Um, and the Sloan site is generally considered to be the oldest designated cemetery in North America. And by that, I mean that it's a cemetery. It's for burying people and mortuary uh, rituals and not for living on. People don't like stay there um, and go about their day to day practices. Um, so I'm going to read over this paper and chew on it for a little bit and then come back with uh, kind of the most um, accessible breakdown of what the paper's talking about uh, and kind of give my opinions on it um, here in a bit. So let's, uh, let's, let's get after this thing. Okay, so the crux of the argument is not bad. Um, basically what's going on is that within each of these mounds, Mound A and Mound B, there are two broad depositional categories. You've got this upper level fill and these lower level um, ash lenses that alternate with burned biological matter. Not charcoal, but uh, more of like a kind of sludgy kind of thing that's going on. And so alternating bands of black, uh, black burn material and white ash. And that ash is really high in concentrations of plant phytoliths. 
and these phytoliths are identifiable um, not necessarily to species, but certain shapes are associated with certain plant taxa. And these strongly resemble um, hydrophilic grasses, so things like river cane. The concentrations of these, like I said, are very, very high. So it really looks like piles of river cane are being burned at very high temperatures. And part of the reason they're saying that these are very high temperatures above what you would want for cooking is that in cooking fires, the phytoliths tend to take on like a, a carbonized soot kind of um, exterior texture. They, they turn black. But if the temperature gets ramped up even higher than that, um, I believe they said uh, above 300 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Um, they can then have that carbon burnt off of them and they turn clear again. Um, and they're silicates, so they're very resistant to fire up to, you know, over a thousand degrees Celsius. I forget the exact amount. So you've got these, um, these bands of burning layers that are, they describe them as nearly purely phytolith. Um, and the method they use to date them, this is the, the one issue that I've got with their conclusion, is that the phytoliths, while being primarily silicates, have carbon embedded in them. And so they're using that residual embedded carbon within, um, they, they call it occlusal carbon, within the phytoliths in these samples to run the C14 days. They've done a lot of magnetometry to corroborate the idea that these are heavily burned concentrations of silicates. And so that whole argument I, I buy. I would prefer that they had used or, or at least added a thermoluminescent stating component to this analysis because those embedded occlusal carbons are a very, very, very small fraction of the actual samples of ash that they're taking to be sent to um, beta analytic to be radiocarbon dated. And they're going through a lot of chemical treatments to extract all the clays and other materials. And I am not entirely comfortable that that process is not skewing the carbon samples. Um, this is a methodology I've never heard of before, and I it apparently was first put forward, I believe they said back in the 80s or 90s. Um, so I'm unfamiliar with it, but a thermoluminescence date on that ash would give you a secondary methodology to date those burning episodes without depending on these absolutely microscopic carbonate inclusions in these silicates. Now, the use of material from reeds is great. Um, reeds and cane is great because those grasses are born and die within a single annual cycle. So you don't really have to worry about, um, like with dendrochronology, like trees that are, um, you know, your carbon samples coming from the core of the tree, which is super, super old. Um, hundreds of years old, and so throws your your dates off, things like that. Um, it's almost like uh, with the cane, you're dating like nutshell or something like that, which is associated with a single calendar year. Um, that's fine, but a it, it just would be better to add a thermoluminescence dating methodology to this analysis to see if those dates corroborate the dates that um, are being brought back by radiocarbon dating these occlusal carbon particulates. Because to even see these phytoliths, you have to use a 200 times magnification scale. They're, they're really tiny. And so to get enough carbon out of these phytoliths for radiocarbon dates, it just it seems kind of sketchy to me based on the sizes of the, the samples they're taking and so on.
But other than that, the sequence of the radiocarbon dates looks pretty good. There are a few anomalous ones. And beyond that, I, I don't see any real glaring issues on this first pass with their methodologies. I do notice in the their author's list, none of them appear to be archaeologists, which always sketches me out a little bit. Um, like the lead author is from the LSU Department of Geology and Geophysics, which is not a bad thing. Um, but sometimes the interpretations tend to be a little bit more bold than you get with someone who's trained as an archaeologist. But as I say, their methodology looks pretty tight. They use a lot of different lines of evidence. A lot of them geomor uh, geomorphological in nature, which is out outside of um, my scope of expertise. But yeah, so far this is this is a really interesting find and well finding and uh, I'm interested to see what further research does to uh, corroborate this or you know or fail to do so because this is going to be picked apart by um, a lot of different people who are going to be you know wanting additional work corrections and and so on and so forth but yeah so far it's not bad um, and <laughs> one of the things that I was concerned about was the possibility that these burning episodes actually only amounted to a thin layer at the very bottom and don't actually relate directly very well to the construction of the mound. But that doesn't seem to be the case at all because uh, those deposits are, you know, several meters thick, the, the burned the burned layers. Um, so this does look like repeated and habitual behavior. They point to the idea that because there's also um, – mammal bone embedded in some of the, these ash bands, very, very tiny microscopic portions of mammal bone that we might be looking at uh, some kind of cremation because humans are animals and we would fall in the, un, under that category. So we might be looking at a cremation site that was used visually, which would be really cool considering that, like I said, the other major um, site that would have any relationship to this uh, temporally and regionally would be the Sloan site up in Arkansas, which is a mortuary. So yeah, if I hear anything else about this that uh, would require me to make an addendum, I'll you know make a new video or re-edit this one and re-upload it um, with some additional comments. But yeah, so far I don't see it as being entirely out of the question. Um, I hope that was uh, I hope that was at least somewhat coherent and clear. Um, and if of course if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments. Uh, as always, thank you for watching.